good morning everyone so today we'll do uh, something a little bit different so today we'll look at the international ferry sound pier okay so this is the first ipho and this was held in 1967 in poland uh, in warsaw so uh, yeah so they started this physics sound pier you know looking at uh, at the math olympiads they, they're already doing well so they started this for physics and uh, in the first one there, there are four four problems and i think they, they had to answer three of them and probably there's three hours for that so this this was just for day one and for day two two they had uh, the the practical so practical we, we will not go through and we'll just look at the theory part and we'll just see the problems and uh, yeah as it turns out these, these problems are very simple from today's standard so i'll just uh, just kind of rush through the solutions okay so the, the, you all understand it uh, there's nothing too much here so so this is the first problem it's uh, so basically there is a, a pole and uh, a ball of mass capital m of 0.2 kg and there's a bullet of mass a small m and velocity v naught so it's given m is 0 0.01 kg velocity is 500 meter per second and it's going through that it goes through the this mass and uh, the mass falls down and hits a resistance s on the ground and okay uh, so then it says where does the bullet reach the ground so there's the distance of the bullet from the ground uh, from the pole that you have to find out and uh, how much kinetic energy what fraction of kinetic energy was lost when the bullet passed through the ball okay so these two things you have to find so probably already know how to do it do it so you just look at the momentum before and after the collisions so before collision you have a small m and a capital m is basically 20 times of that so i just write 20 m so this is moving with a velocity v naught and this is at rest so the momentum you can find it out from here and after the collision you s the bullet goes through and let's say it goes through a velocity v1 and then the ball starts moving with the velocity v2 now you apply your momentum conservation so here the net momentum is m into v naught plus so the, this is momentum is zero here and here it's m into v1 plus 20 m into v2 so this one m v0 is mv1 plus 20 m v2 m can you can remove it and you get v0 is v1 plus 20 v2 and after that let's say the time that it takes to hit the ground you can calculate it from this the h is given so you can get the t so s h is ut plus half gt square so u in this vertical direction will be zero so it's just half half gt square and s you can write it as v2 into t okay and so you have to find this distance x so what is x x is v1 into t right so v, v1 is the velocity of bullet into t so v1 is you can convert from here it's v0 minus 20 v2 so it's v0 t minus 20 v2 t so v0 t so t you can get from here t is 2h by g and v to t from here is just s and then you just put the values and you will get your answer 100 minutes and then it's saying uh, what part of kinetic energy of the bullet was converted into heat so you find the initial loss the i mean the initial energy before collision and the energy after collision and take a difference of that and then you can find this fraction okay so you'll need to find v1 and v2 so from here you can find v2 v2 is s into g by 2h t is 2h by g so you can get s where you can get v2 which comes out to be 20 v1 then if you put v2 here you can get v1 so v1 is v0 minus 20 v2 so that comes out to be 100 and then you just look at the initial energy minus final energy divide by the initial energy that will give you the fraction so that's 1 minus ef by ei so look at the final energy it's half mv1 square plus half of 20 mv2 square divided by ei is half of mv0 square you just put the values and it comes out to be point 
928 or in terms of percentage it will be 92 percent so around 90 92 93 percent of energy is lost in during the collision okay so this was problem one this is problem two it's very easy so it's uh, this this kind of this kind of problem is very routine nowadays in in, uh, in the school so there is a infinite network of resistors each of them is r and you have to find the net resistance between these two points so i think you already know how to do this so basically you have to see that this whole circuit is equivalent to this smaller circuit inside so if the value of this outer one is x then the inside one is also x yeah because it's just this set which goes repeating till infinite and this is also this set which repeats till infinite so the both the values must be same so now you have a r and a resistance x in which are in parallel and then that is connected to uh, this resistor in series so the equivalent of that should be equal to x so x basically is just r this one and r and small x in parallel will be just this rx by r plus x so you get a quadratic and you take its positive root okay so there is a plus minus sign it cannot be negative with the resistance so you just take the positive sign and this is your answer okay this is problem three this so this one is uh, slightly complicated uh, so i'll just explain you so there are two balls one is hanging from a wall one is just sitting on, a, on some floor okay and uh, they are uh, identical and uh, same quantity of heat is supplied to both the balls so then it's ask you about the final temperature of the balls are they same are they not what so from first look it might appear that it's same but of course if you just give it uh height uh, i mean a uh, heat q then what, what will happen so let's say the initial temperature is t naught and then you give a heat q to both of them and let's say temperature of this is t a and temperature of this becomes tb why will it be different because the ball will also expand yeah so this one expand will expand a little bit and the center of mass of this then will come down let's say by a sm by amount h a it comes down and this one when it expands it will move a height hb let's say okay so so to compensate for this change in potential energy they were they will be different okay so you just write down the the first law of thermodynamics here so your heat supplied is will go into the change of temperature and change of potential energy so for the first sphere you can write q is equal to mc and delta t so that's t a minus t naught minus of mgh so since it goes down so there will be a minus sign and for the same one if you write for this other ball so here it's tb and here it will become a plus sign okay and from there so you can just subtract or whatever you can bring t naught to the side and you will see that mcta minus mgha is equal to mctb minus or plus mghb so ta minus tb into c is equal to g times ha plus hb and since this is positive so this is greater than zero so this is positive so ta will be greater than tb so this is the explanation but here is one catch okay so at when this problem was pro proposed this explanation would have been sufficient but recently i think not not uh, very very far uh, i don't know which year it was but uh, they discovered that the actual result is something a little bit opposite so actually this will have a slightly lower temperature and this will have a slightly higher temperature okay and it needs the knowledge of advanced statistical mechanics and i'll just uh, put the link of the paper in the in the comments and you can have a look if you want okay so this is the final problem so it says there is a vessel with volume v naught of 10 liters and it has dry air and at some moments uh, some water is added and the system is warmed up to 100 degrees celsius so just find the final pressure so 
first of all you have to kind of see whether all the all the water will evaporate or only some will evaporate and some water will remain so first thing is that you assume all the water evaporates then the density of vapor will be 3 by 10 and it's 0.3 you know 3 by 10 that's 0.3 and that is actually less than the density of the vapor of saturation uh, of the vapor you know so that that is 0.6 for water so this information has to be given somewhere on uh, the, the question paper i think so since this is smaller that means all the water will evaporate and once you figure that out it's actually quite easy so then you can write p is the partial pressure of the air plus the partial pressure of the vapor so this two you can find separately so first one is you can use this p1 by t1 equal to p2 by t2 yeah. so p of air by convert this to kelvin so it's 273 you, uh, you have to add everywhere it's 273 plus t and initially p not over 273 and for vapor you can use this pv equal to nrt so m n well is the number of moles so that will be mass of by molecular weight of the water so from there you get the vapor pressure of air okay now uh, vapor pressure of water so uh, yeah, and then you just write it down here and you put the values and you will get around 1.9 atmosphere so th this was the first uh, international physics Olympiad. so as as you can see the paper was quite easy and even these days the 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 level of paper of course is much higher than than this one but uh, compared to math olympiad it's still uh, still i would say it's uh, much easier but of course there, there is a practical part also to this so anyways uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching you can email me if you have anything to say or you can write in the comments so i'll see you again next time till then goodbye